Everybody knows that Colorado has some amazing mountain towns. So where should you visit? Where should you move? Where do the locals go? That's what this video is for. I'm going to be talking to you about the top mountain towns that I think you should consider too, or maybe not consider. Maybe it's not your vibe and maybe just stay away. All right, we're going to start right at Breckenridge. So Breckenridge is one of the most popular mountain towns here in Colorado. And it, honestly, it's one of my most favorite ones as well. So I'd highly recommend Breckenridge or Breck as the locals say. We all say Breck uh, when you live here. Now Breckenridge is going to be roughly about an hour and a half to two hours west of Denver, depending on traffic. Now, why is it so cool? Well, I mean, honestly, there's things to do year round. And that's really cool when you're going to a mountain town. You want to be able to do things all the time, right? So yes, Breck is known for its ski resort, which is nationally well known. It is awesome out there. So you, do, you are going to have the winter sports out there, which is great. But Breckenridge is also known for its summer activities too. So you're going to have hiking, fishing, biking, all of that good stuff takes place in the summertime as well. Um, they actually have, in the wintertime, they actually have, they're known for their ice sculpture festival. So that's really cool. And then there's also, they're also known for a, a Breckenridge troll that's like huge 15 foot sculpture thing that you could go hike to. It's a very minimal hike, um, but that's really what they're known for too. So go check that out if you happen to be in that area. Now Breck it has a really cool downtown area. It's like this little historic area. Fun little fact about this little area is the movie Dumb and Dumber. The entire movie they kept on saying that they were in Aspen, right? No, they're actually that whole area, the whole movie was filmed in the Breckenridge area. So that's a little fun fact. If you're in this area though, what I personally love is the shopping and the restaurants. One of my most favorite restaurants, if you ever make it over there, is going to be downstairs Eric's Pizza, and it's downstairs, and there's like a little arcade area, but their um, pizza is amazing. Freaking love it. So that's fun. And then I just love the vibe of Breckenridge, right? When you're getting off of the slopes and you want to go grab a beer, everybody's just walking around in their snow boots and their snow attire. It's just a lot of fun going out there. Now, if you want to move out there, it is pricey, okay? It's not going to be as much as some other areas that I'm going to be talking about, but I mean, it is still going to be pricey. We're looking at about $1.3 million for a house out there, which is expensive. Yeah, it's absolutely expensive. Rent's going to be roughly $1,800 for a one bedroom for rent. I mean, it's pricey. So a lot of people who move out there, especially the younger kids who want to work or snowboard, snow bums, whatever, they're going to probably get roommates and they're going to try to afford this all together because it does get expensive when you're out there. I will say though, there's obviously less expensive options when you're living in Breckenridge too. You know, you could get something, you know, under a million too, but it's not, you know, it might be just a little bit outside of Breck. Um, a lot of people ho have uh, condos or timeshares in this area too. So do kind of keep that in mind. It is pricey, but they're, you know, I mean, you're paying to be in Breckenridge and that's one of our most popular places in Colorado to visit. Okay, my next one that I really, really love, but I don't go there as much is going to be Steamboat. And the reason I don't go there as much is because it's, it's kind of far. I mean, we're about three hours northwest of Denver to get out to Steamboat. So, I mean, it is a trek. So if you don't mind driving, have at it. I hate driving. So it does take me, you know, a bit to get out there, but I do love Steamboat for so many reasons. Just like a Breckenridge, it is a year round activities out there, which is fantastic. They're well known for their champagne powder out in Steamboat, which is, you know, great if you're going to be a snowboarder, a skier, all that stuff. But during the summertime, they also have a lot of cool things too. You could go tubing down the Yampa. Um, I love tubing down the Yampa. It's so much fun. Just something that even the little kids can do. I mean, it's like, you know, not, it's not deep. So don't worry about that. There's the, um, the actual downtown area that is more going to be kind of like a Western vibe. So kind of like a cowboy thing. They are really, really well known for their rodeos out there. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, youth sports that take place, like a lot of their conventions or their competitions take place in Steamboat as well. The Strawberry Springs Hot Springs, because they love hot springs out in this area too. Strawberry Springs is amazing. Love Strawberry Springs. It's a hike like to drive out there, um, especially if it's like winter time, you know, make sure you have those snow tires on your car because it is a drive to get out there that's not shoveled. 
but it's well worth it. Highly recommend going to Strawberry Springs. Um, the cost of living in Steamboat is going to be a little bit higher, not as much as Breck, um, but you're still going to be roughly around that million dollar price point. Rents are going to be roughly around the same, sixteen to eighteen hundred for a one bedroom. So it's also going to depend on the different types of year too that you're trying to find all these. So during heavy, heavy tourism seasons, like in the winter time, rents, hotels, all of that good stuff is going to be a lot more than it, you know off season, of course. It, it is expensive, but the, it, it is just know if you move out there you're going to be paying for its beauty you're going to be paying for its cute little quaint town the historic the the western vibe um they have a lot of uh tourism that takes place out in this area a lot of cool restaurants oh one of my most favorite breweries if you're interested in going to it is called mountain top mountain top brewery mountain tap excuse me and it's delicious my most favorite and it sounds crazy is going to be a coconut macaroon beer and it's like a stout. And um, if you're into coconut, this is amazing. And it, my husband, who doesn't even really like coconut, loves this beer. So we love just going out there just for that alone, honestly. But Steamboat is definitely worth it's worth the drive if you're able to get out there. Okay, so number three is gonna be Uray, Colorado. So this one actually a lot of people don't even know about even Coloradoans. I was honestly grew up here my entire life and I didn't even know about Uray until roughly about 10 years ago. It is going to be six hours roughly southwest of Denver. So it is quite a bit farther and maybe that's why a lot of people just don't make it out there just because it is so far. But I will say it is worth the drive and I absolutely love the scenery. So Uray is actually known to be little Switzerland. And when you get there, you'll know exactly why. Like you are surrounded by mountains. It truly makes you feel like you are in Switzerland. It is a lot more laid back. It is a lot more, uh, you know, it's smaller, a lot less tourism. Um, it, it It's just this really cute, quaint little area that's kind of just like its own little entity. They have a lot of hot springs out there too. So if you're into hot springs, Uray is great, but they're also known for a lot of hiking, but they're known for ice climbing. So if that's something that you're into, that is a great area to head to. Um, cute little downtown, cute restaurants, cute bars, you know, things like that. But one thing I do love is that it is located right off of the Million Dollar Highway. The Million Dollar Highway is going to be roughly 25 miles that's gonna attach or connect Silverton and Uray together and it's this 25 mile stretch that's <laughs> there's a lot of switchbacks there's a lot of like you feel like you're going to be driving off of a cliff kind of thing but if you're a moto motorcycle rider it is gorgeous um, it is a beautiful beautiful ride uh, that's how I personally have done it a couple times and it's just it's well worth it but it is a little bit nerve-wracking at times but I highly recommend going down there now the cost of living in Uray is going to be quite a bit less than the other ones I've just spoken about. Roughly about six hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand for a home out there. Rents are going to be roughly about thirteen hundred dollars a month for a one bedroom. So you do get a little bit more, but yeah, you're six hours away from Denver. You're actually closer to Durango than you are than you are Denver. Now gonna go right into Durango. Now Durango is awesome. I love Durango and when I was down in Uray what we did was we went from Uray to Durango. Beautiful drive, beautiful motorcycle ride. Durango is gonna be southwest of, of Denver as well and they're right next to or very close to Mesa Verde National Park. So that's kind of the vibe over there. If so if you're wanting something to do, if you want to you know go to Mesa Verde, you know you're gonna be in Durango right there anyways. Durango has a really cool downtown area and it's actually, I mean, I went there as a kid uh, and then I, I've been there since and it, they've really revamped everything out there. It's a really cool area there. They have a lot of festivals. Uh, they just, they, they just have a lot of things going on actually in Durango. The cost of living is in Durango is going to be a little bit less than some of those other ones as well. It's going to be roughly around that 600 to 800 price point as well. So I mean, yeah, you're the reason why I mean, you're farther away from Denver, I will say though, because you are farther south in Durango, you're going to probably have a little bit better weather, less snow, 
you will do stuff you still have snow don't get me wrong but it, you're not going to have nearly as much which is you know great if you want to be a part of the mountain towns but less snow head over to Durango. So Estes Park is actually by far probably my most favorite one on the list, um, mainly because it is going to be closer to where I live and you don't have to deal with I-70, which is a nightmare at any given time. And most of the other ones you will have to be on I-70. Now Estes Park is gonna be roughly about an hour and a half northwest of Denver. And the reason why I love Estes so much is that it's closer for sure. But you also have uh, you have the downtown area, which is great, but you're right there on the foothills of Rocky Mountain National Park. So you're able to get into Rocky, Ma Rocky Mountain National Park by going straight through Estes. Uh, you have the great downtown area, which is super cute. I mean, you have ice cream and taffy galore, if that's your thing. Uh, but then you also have the Stanley Hotel right there. So the Stanley Hotel also, fun little fact, is was filmed in Dumb and Dumber too. So they also filmed it in Estes Park, still not Aspen. So you have that too. The one downside I will say with Estes Park is that it's very much a seasonal summer and spring kind of city. Uh, nothing, it pretty much dies in the winter where the other ones you still are actually pick up more in the winter time and you die a little bit in the summer. Estes is the complete opposite. There is no ski resorts near Estes. Um, th there's just not a whole lot to do. And that, in, in fact, while they are a mountain town, they don't get a whole lot of snow to begin with out there. It's just kind of like in this valley kind of thing where they don't get a whole lot. But you'd also don't have the ski, ski resorts. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind. A lot of people who move to Estes, though, I mean, you do have the price points are going to be roughly around eight hundred thousand. The rents are going to be right around the same, you know, fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month. But a lot of people who buy in Estes is going to be investors who are wanting to do like Airbnbs and stuff, which is totally fine. However, they have recently changed in the last year or two to where if you want to own an Airbnb, yeah, you can, but you have to go onto a list. And this list, this waiting list is roughly two years long or so just to get your chance to do your, your property as an Airbnb. I have a family member who's in the process of trying to do that and she's still on the list. So kind of keep that in mind if you're wanting to invest in Estes because of those reasons, they just, because everybody wants to go to Estes. Honestly, while we don't, they don't have the ski resorts, they still, it's still an amazing place. You still have the hiking, the fishing, ATVing, Jeeping, all of that good stuff. You just don't have the skiing. So a lot of people just go up there just to hang out and just to kind of relax, honestly. That's one of the biggest things about Estes Park is just, you know, the kind of chill vibe, especially in the winter time. There's a lot of, you know, a wildlife, deer, moose, all of that stuff walking around at any given time. And that's just why people truly do, including myself, love to go out there. Okay, so the next two are actually gonna be my two least favorite and I'll explain why. The first one is Vail, and Vail is gonna be roughly about two hours west of Denver. And yes, I, I love Vail, I, I like Vail. Uh, Vail is going to be very yuppity, very expensive, very expensive. Um, you know, you're roughly about $2 million house to be there, over 2000 or to 3000 for rent. I mean, it's definitely more expensive. But the downtown area, like their Vail Village is really cute, honestly. It's very European. Um, so when you're walking through there, you kind of feel like you're walking through Germany or Switzerland or things like that. They're obviously known for their ski resort. I mean, world-renowned skis, skiing resort, and they have all the outdoor stuff too. But the reason why I just, I, I don't feel like, I kind of feel, it, it's not as vibrant, I guess. It's not as, there's there's things going on, there's festivals, it's just a vibe that I personally get that I, I sometimes I get bored. I mean, I don't know, unless you're there during the winter time, the summertime is very lacking to me, and I just don't feel like there's nearly as a, enough for the price point that I would like to see. Aspen is the final one, and Aspen is four, roughly four hours outside of Denver, and Aspen is, I mean, everybody knows of Aspen, I'm assuming, like it's its expensive, like extremely expensive. You go down there, you only have the, you know, most expensive bougie stores. Price points for houses are over $3 million. Like, it's just crazy, and you're paying to truly have that zip code of Aspen. The skiing is 
So apparently phenomenal. I've never done it. Like, honestly, one, it's too far for me to drive to spend that kind of money, honestly. And two, it's just everything else is expensive out there, too. I will say, though, every, like they have Maroon Bells, which is a very famous, uh, you know, mountain hiking thing going on out there. They have all that. They have, uh, you know, phenomenal shopping, phenomenal restaurants, but you are paying to be part of all of that. It is very expensive. And I guess that's why I truly, these both, while beautiful, I, I feel like some of the other ones that I've already mentioned are just as good and less expensive personally that I don't think that I would be paying to either live in Aspen or even visit Aspen when I could be in Breckenridge or say Durango or Steamboat and get the same experience that I would say in Aspen. So those are my top areas or maybe not so top areas in Colorado as far as mountain towns are concerned that I think you should visit, consider moving to if you're able to, um, any of that. I am a local real estate agent in the state of Colorado. So if you do have questions about any of these areas, please let me know, I am a native. I have been to all of them and obviously I have my opinions on all. Uh, please let me know how I can help you. Remember to click that subscribe button uh, so you are notified every time I have a new video. And then to the next video, take care.